All right, I'm just leaving the gym where I got a shower and I need to find a place to sleep tonight because I have work tomorrow. I am still working, but I'm now homeless and I'll tell you about that in this video. Hi, I'm Christine. After starting Life Over in 2020, I'm using seasonal work to build financial security, experience new places, and most importantly, keep living life as a big adventure. Come along as I live like a local in desired destinations, spend time in nature hiking, backpacking, and living out of my car, and craft the trips of my dreams on a backpacker's budget. Actually, the worst when I forget to bring clean clothes in with me to sh when I shower to change into. So anyway, I just changed my top. I did bring in my sweatpants. I just forgot to bring in this sweatshirt. Um, before I head up the mountain into the park, I need to fill up my gas tank, and I want to do that ASAP because the sun is setting, and I don't like to get gas in the dark. You're finally being honest When you become somebody else Feels like I never knew you Have I been lying to myself Just see Okay, all fueled up, ready to go It is ooh, almost 8 o'clock I've got a couple hour drive ahead of me Ish Not gonna disclose where it is I decide to park at this point, I'm not even sure where I'm gonna to decide to park, but uh, I do know which general direction I need to head in. So let's get going. I made it to where I'm gonna camp for tonight. Hopefully everything will be smooth. Um, it's almost 10 o'clock. I do have to work tomorrow, but I also want to get up and get a hike in before work. So I think I have too much to say about what has happened today and over the course of the summer to fill you in on tonight. So I'm going to leave it and tell you about that a little bit later. Good night for now. One cub. Okay, I spent way too much time staring at the bear. Well, really, just not even enough time. <laughs> 
and um, now I'm running a little bit late for work or it's gonna be tight so I'm gonna run grab my bag get changed and start work and I will catch you guys later when I am looking for camp big news here guys big big news also the park is super crowded right now and I am leaving I am leaving the park why? Not because I'm just looking for camp tonight, but because I have been released from my work agreement. I guess I don't need this anymore. So I have been released from work. I am done with my summer work contract. It was because of the housing issue. Now, I wanna be very clear, I left in excellent standing. It was because of their multiple failures relating to the same area of which they were not providing me with suitable housing to meet safe sanitary standards. And so I was given an option to either move into the hotel, into a room, a private room with a private bath. And if you've been watching some of my more recent videos, like when I first got here in the summer, I was in a private room with a shared bath, which was actually kind of a breach of my work agreement because I should be given a private room and a private bath for my level of responsibility, my title. Um, or I could be released from my contract. I was very torn. It was really hard. I talked to some of the other managers, checked in with how they're doing. They said they were counting on me, but they also understood. I also checked to see hotel availability. Turns out we're, we're sold out. We don't have rooms. <laughs> so I can't, I can't move into one of those rooms. So it is what it is. The decision was basically made for me. I called my boss. She said, Thank you so much. I'm so sorry this has happened to you yet again. And I said, please, this is not your responsibility. Do not apologize for other people's failures. She said, somebody has to apologize. I will tell you a bit more about everything that went down later. The thing that's on my agenda right now, I didn't even switch on my work clothes. Um, I'm driving a couple of hours to Puyallup Washington where there is a Goodwill and I'm going to drop off some things before I'm on the road. Oh, I have less than five minutes left of my drive tonight. I'm headed into Port Angeles where hopefully I can camp at a rest area. It was on iOverlander so hopefully it's a-okay. I am so tired. It is like 9.16 p.m. Work today, kind of. I was at work today. Didn't actually do hardly any work at all. Um, but it was just like a mentally and emotionally draining day. I kind of told you guys what's going on. I'm still in my work clothes, but I am done with work. I'm going to give you a little bit more tea tomorrow morning about everything that sort of went on that led to my one night of homelessness and eventually getting released from my con my work agreement early because um, basically they were just so apologetic for the way I've been treated. But anyway, <laughs> I will um, talk about that in greater detail tomorrow, and then I'm going to move on with my life and have a nice, fun day. But I'll, uh, I'll wrap this video up tomorrow morning when I give you all the deets about what happened and hopefully having a good night's sleep tonight. Um, also, I did stop and I donated 
all of my other work clothes. <laughs> so this is like this outfit that I'm wearing is literally all I have left in my professional attire. And uh, yeah. Alright, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. I'm tired, Bevis. Your destination is on the right. It's 6 a.m. I can't tell what's going on out there, but I don't really think it's a big deal. Might be just a traffic stop, but I'm actually just gonna take off right now and start heading towards the coast. tell you the rest of the story then I'm gonna get on with my day and on with my life part of the trade-off so, of doing really seasonal work is that you live in this employer subsidized housing so it has allowed me to live in some beautiful destinations that people travel all over the world to visit and I get to stay there for an entire season it's also usually either free or at a very low cost in the case of my summer gig that I just left, it is free for me. Um, and so I deal with living in historic buildings and the maintenance challenges that come with that. Um, you know, extra noise and shared spaces and things like that, which that's fine. That's what I sign up for and that's what I expect. One of the challenges that I had this summer was that, well, first of all, I moved five times. <laughs> when I moved in, I moved into the hotel room, which I moved into a clean, beautiful room, but I didn't like that the bathrooms and showers were shared with guests. It was not ideal, but I didn't complain about it. It was just all that they had available, and so I went with it to be flexible and adaptable then the hotel was sold out so they weren't able to give me that room anymore and they were like we don't know where we're gonna put you we don't have a place for you i tried to stay calm through that but it did irk me a little bit um but i again i'm just trying to be flexible adaptable and they found a room for me that i moved into in an area called staff hall or manager hall and it's kind of attached to the main building where the managers live. They have private rooms with private baths or like there's some couples housing down there and then there's the general manager room down there as well. That room wasn't occupied. So I moved in there, but they scheduled me to move in there and the housing team didn't clean the room beforehand. So then I requested to have the room cleaned before I moved in because it hadn't been cleaned since the previous tenant had vacated the room and that person hadn't left the room very clean. So it took about took up about half of my day off 
to make that move because I was waiting for the room to be cleaned. And then I stayed there for two nights. One night somebody comes in, or one night, one day, somebody comes, knocks on the door and starts opening the door. And I was like, I'm in here. And they're like, I didn't know, this is the housing office. I didn't know this room was occupied. And I said, well, I was moved into this room. And they said, well, we're about to move six J1s into this room. J1s are people that are on J1 visas, so international students. And they're kind of just referred to as J1s. Um, and so then I was like, okay, well, where am I gonna live? So then I heard from housing that I was being moved down to the main office. There's housing in the main office where they house some of those more senior managers or some of the per permanent full-time employees either that are in transition or some just live there permanently. So I've lived there before <laughs> last year. So I was like, okay, moving again. I get moved into that room, that apartment, and it is filthy. At that point, I had no choice but to clean it for myself. So not only was I moving yet again on my time off, but I am now cleaning this place so that I can live there for two nights. <laughs> and then I moved again because I moved over to my business unit, which is Sunrise. I moved in there and it was clean because I cleaned it last year. My issue is not that I think I'm too good to clean. It's that when it's somebody else's responsibility as a manager to ensure that the things in their department are getting done that affect other people, if they're not doing their job, then I want to make it known that they're not in demonstrating how it's affecting the rest of the people that work for the company. But I'm not done <laughs> because that is four moves. My business unit cl closed up. I inspected all of my staff's rooms when they vacated, made sure that it was left to an acceptable level of cleanliness. And then I also cleaned my space, public areas, restrooms, all of that ready for it to winter over for whomever moves in there next year to move into a pleasant and sanitary environment. Now again, it will winter over and rodents and stuff may have access to certain areas so like they will need to sanitize it but I did as much as I could so they moved me back over to the paradise side and give me this room assignment in a building that I've not never lived in before which is kind of far away from the main area but you know other people live there honestly it's not really managers managers don't really live there but I was like, maybe this is all they have. I'm going to roll with it. I, I walk in there. It's dark. It's dirty. There are six bunk beds. I, I'm going to be the only person in the room. Okay. Telling myself, roll with it. I go in. I look in the bathroom. And the shower stall is full of mud. It's full, it's full of mold and dirty. It has not been cleaned. It was not cleaned by the vacating tenants. It was not cleaned by the housing department in preparation of my move in. This is now the third room that I have been moved into in 15 weeks that is not ready for occupation. So <laughs> with 12 days left of my work agreement, I got back into the email chain um, back and forth talking about what room I should move into and what time I'm expected and blah, blah, blah. And I replied to the, that person who is the human resources manager, as well as the operations director, who is my boss and the park general manager. And I basically tell them that I said that obviously this company has proven themselves incapable of providing me with safe and sanitary housing. Then I outline some of the things that I just told you. There's a few more things that I'm going to layer in in just a second that really lend themselves more to the safe side of things. Um, so anyway, I said that to them and I said I would stay for the rest of my work agreement, but no thank you to the housing because they're not doing it good enough. I said they've proven themselves incapable of providing it to me safe and sanitary. 
So I would make arrangements for my own accommodation and I would be there to finish out my work agreement. And I told them that it was unacceptable the way that they were, I mean, it's a hospitality company. Like there's, in hospitality, there's something, like there's internal guests and external guests. Internal guests are the people that work for you. And as a member of management, you want to take care of those people because those people spend their entire day taking care of all of the other people. And that is how you run the business, is you take care of the other people, the external guests. And if your internal guests don't feel like they're being taken care of, how do they have it within themselves to do what you've hired them to do? It's just, that's just how you run a well-run hospitality company. Okay, here's the other part of the story. At my business unit during the summer, I had a total of nine hot showers. I was there for 11 weeks. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> um, we were having significant issues with hot water traveling to the upper level of the housing. And yeah, I let it be known. And some people even like laughed about it or made jokes about it. I'm like, this is not funny. This is not you providing the level of housing that is acceptable. And then the other thing that happened um, was that the fire alarm started going off. The fire alarm started going off every single day at varying times, full fire alarm for the entire building. And some people's reaction was like, well, that's inconvenient, that's annoying. I'm like, yeah, 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 for sure. 7 a.m., that going off, very annoying. Um, but l more than that, what I actually care about is the fact that living in a almost 100 year old timber building in a for forested area, wilderness area, your number one threat to life is fire. Our company takes, the company takes fire doors and closing fire doors which are installed that safety very seriously. They're very adamant about that during their inspections and we comply with that. Fire doors are annoying, but if you need them, you need them, they can help, you know, seed the spread of fire or slow it down anyway. And they take it seriously because they understand that fire is such a big risk. Tell me what happens when you have a fire alarm going off every day and it's an erroneous alarm. What happens is the 19 year olds that work for you and yourself, you start not really responding to the fire alarm aside from seeing who can silence it the quickest, turning it off, rolling over and going back to bed or going about your business. That can cause loss of life because now we are training for complacency instead of vigilance. And for some reason, I seem to have been the only person that understood that, not the only person, almost the only person that understood that with that level of responsibility and wanting immediate action. Yet it took over a month for anything to happen for the company that um, services our fire alarms to respond. And you know when they responded? You know when they were scheduled to come out? The day before I moved out. I'm like, well, I'm so glad fire alarm won't be going off all winter. Just stuff like that. That's why, that's why I got so mad about the housing. And that's why I did what I did. I sent the angry email. It was still professional, but it was basically letting them know, like, it, it was meant to embarrass them, honestly. Not everybody will understand that kind of decision, but that's just a bit about my personality. It's like, I can actually be very loyal for a very long time and I will deal with a lot, but there's something that when the the switch flips it's like 
there yeah no I'm done with you <laughs> so then I got um I got a call I think I talked about this already but I got a call yesterday morning when I reported to work and I uh, was asked if I would like to move into a guest room with a private bath in the hotel for the remainder of my time there or if I would like to be released early for my work contract and honestly it wasn't super easy to make the decision um it was I didn't quite feel ready to leave I had mentally prepared to be there for that period of time and although it's not the most enjoyable part of the year for me um managing in that particular area I was mentally ready to do it and I was just kind of saying my hellos to people and now all of a sudden maybe I was going to be saying my forever goodbyes um but there were no rooms in the hotel and I kind of just took it as a sign and an opportunity to hit the road early um it's hard to walk away from 10 days of pay, <laughs> especially with what I have on the horizon, but I'm just gonna trust that it was the right thing to do and that's what I was meant to be doing. So now I'm out here on the road and I'm leaving all of that drama and everything behind and just leaving it with peace. I'm a little bit sad. I'm gonna miss some of the people that I come, came to really care about and I knew really cared about me there. But that's just normal with seasonal work anyway. Um, just the ending was a bit more abrupt than I expected. And now I'm out here on the Olympic Peninsula and we're starting road life. So I'll see you on the next one and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Take care, I'll see you soon. Bye. Just letting them know that they were failing so hard that I couldn't be part of it anymore and that I would just mysteriously handle my own housing in the middle of nowhere rather than live in what they were trying to put me in because they can't handle it. <laughs> Not everybody will understand that kind of decision, but that's just a bit about my personality. It's like I can actually be very loyal for a very long time and I will deal with a lot, but there's something that when the, f the switch flips, it's like, there, yeah, no, I'm done with you. <laughs> so then I got, um, I got a call, I think I talked about this already, but I got a call yesterday morning when I reported to work and uh, was asked if I would like to move into a guest room with a private bath in the hotel for the remainder of my time there or if I would like to be released early for my work contract. And honestly, it wasn't super easy to make the decision. Um, it was, I didn't quite feel ready to leave. I had mentally prepared to be there for that period of time. And although it's not the most enjoyable part of the year for me, um, managing in that particular area, I was mentally ready to do it. And I was just kind of saying my hellos to people. And now all of a sudden, maybe I was going to be saying my forever goodbyes. Um, but there were no rooms in the hotel. And I kind of just took it as a sign and an opportunity to hit the road early. Um, it's hard to walk away from 10 days of pay, <laughs> especially with what I have on the horizon, but I'm just gonna trust that it was the right thing to do and that's what I was meant to be doing. So now I'm out here on the road and I'm leaving all of that drama and everything behind and just leaving it with peace. I'm a little bit sad. I'm gonna miss some of the people that I come, came to really care about and I knew really cared about me there. But that's just normal with seasonal work anyway. Um, just the ending was a bit more abrupt than I expected. And now I'm out here on the Olympic Peninsula and we're starting road life. So I'll see you on the next one and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Take care, I'll see you soon, bye.